Georgia is under attack from its neighbor Russia. Uh, Russia has uh, been, uh, you know, uh, putting us under artillery barrage and uh, just moving its uh, its um, uh, armored vehicles into Georgia. Uh, but basically, started to move them yesterday. That's why the whole thing, in first place, erupted. And the whole day today, they've been bombing Georgia from um, numerous warplanes um, and uh, specifically targeting civilian population. And we have. Uh, scores of wounded and dead among civilian population all around the country uh, not not so not as much, so much in in the conflict area in the, but uh, all around the country I have to stress it and these are uh, exclusively civilians to put it target. plainly sir is your tiny country at war now with Russia well uh, my country is in self-defense against Russian aggression Russian uh, Russian troops uh, invaded Georgia uh, Russian troops uh, uh, are fighting against Georgian self-defense troops and uh, Russia is bombing Georgia. Now, uh, this is the worst nightmare one can encounter. Are you in any communication with Russian authorities or with um, Vladimir Putin? No, they've been um, uh, basically pre preferring to talk with us with menaces and blackmail since last a few days, as well as for since last months and uh, years, uh, you know the the uh, these troops that uh, are in uh, Georgia now they, they didn't uh, they didn't come uh, unexpectedly. Those troops were amassed at the border has been amassed have been amassed at the border for the last three or four months. They were claiming that they were staging exercises there, and as soon as a suitable pretext was found yesterday, they moved in. But, uh, you know, it was uh, meant to be this way, as we found out, all the way through. And they didn't hide very much that. You know, they've been preparing. They've been looking at the world opinion, how they would react to this preparation. And in the end, they just moved in. It's unheard of, unparalleled. It's absolutely outrageous. I think it, uh, I mean, since Russia invaded um, Afghanistan in uh, Soviet Union, invaded Afghanistan in 79, or uh, Soviet Union invaded Czechoslovakia in 68 with its tanks on Hungary in 56, and nothing like that has happened in uh, post-Cold War world. And that's certainly uh, very, very troubling. Your government has like had very Jean close relations, United. forgive me, your government has had very close relations with NATO. Are you in contact with NATO authorities? Are you making any appeal to outside nations to intervene? I spoke yesterday with Secretary General of NATO before Russians uh, started, before Russians got involved because we were already felt that heat was going up. Uh, you know, separatists that operate in Georgia that are not independence fighters. They, they claim to be part of Russia. This is a small enclave where population is less than 30,000 people uh, in the middle of Georgia. Uh, and, you know, it's directly run by the Russian government since 1992. Uh, and uh, so the whole situation was abnormal. A small, tiny part of the part of country claiming to be part of another state. But the point was that when temperature was went up, uh, I, I found Secretary General of NATO to express my concern and ask for his mediation. Now, unfortunately, the whole thing had erupted, has erupted before he had time to react. Um, uh, I, I, I spoke with him today again, but it's not only about NATO. You know, certain Russians have been irritated by our contacts with NATO, but uh, President Putin in the past, and now Prime Minister Putin, has uh, many times told me that he, it's totally unacceptable for him, uh, not only uh, my close relations with the United States and the West in general, but the political system that Georgia has opted for, democracy, freedom, and that's, I think, the major irritant in this part uh, of what Russia regards as its exclusive backyard. What should the West and the United States do now? Wake up. Wake up. This is what is happening now. It's not about Georgia. It's about the basic values the West has. The basic values the U.S. has always, always preached us. You know, the, uh, we, are, we are a small country, but you know, we are attacked because we wanted to be free. We are attacked because we wanted to build genuine democracy. We are attacked because we built a non-corrupt free enterprise society that is prospering and thriving. We are under attack because we never wanted to accept the old corrupt rules of game and wanted to be close to the West and go into the Western fold where we belong, we belong into the European fold. And this is, and you know, if countries, if, if, if uh, Americans and Europeans don't stand up for their own values, for their own principles, then those principles and values will be in danger today in Georgia, tomorrow elsewhere. And this is, it would be a never-ending story. 
This is, uh, I think there are many diplomatic tools. I mean, we've been asking for immediate ceasefire. We've been asking for separation of forces. We've been asking for international mediation. We've been asking for short-term solutions as well as long-term international presence here. Uh, and certainly, we, you know, the, the, what is really happening now is it's like straight from the law of jungles. We are small, they are big, and they basically adapt us. And look at the timing. Olympic Games, people don't care about politics. American elections, um, you know, people, most of the uh, statesmen are gone for holidays. And it's ideal time to attack a small country. Who would care? Big Russia attacking small countries somewhere for God knows what problem. I think it is a very well planned provocation, but now it turned into large scale aggression. You know, we, I've seen firsthand today with my own eyes how they, the two Russian jet planes came very low on a uh, you know, marketplace, a very busy marketplace in a small town in the middle of Georgia that had nothing to do with the conflict area. It's far from that conflict area. And deliberately dropped 500 kilograms bombs on civilian population. Well, I happen to be not far from there. I saw it with my own eyes. And we have growing number of civilian casualties. And you know, it's happening as we speak. They might be dropping new bombs. Mr. You know, President, Mr. President forces, you're being very clear uh, about your position on all of this, but let me ask you a question. Uh, did you take a gamble? Your government launched its own attempt to retake South Ossetia, um, no. I guess 24 no, we, hours ago. We didn't, we didn't. Was that unwise in retrospect? We didn't. We didn't. Well, the, the facts are following. I mean, the, the whole issue has been lasted for the last many years, and we would be certainly suicidal at this stage when Russia is especially provocative to initiate anything on our own. What happened was that, you know, there have been continuous provocations, there have been continuous artillery barrage. Despite the artillery barrage, I announced unilateral ceasefire. I, hand, I reached out to the separatists. I offered them, uh, I again extended the offer of wide autonomy, as well as full amnesty for all the crimes committed. And basically, uh, you know, uh, after that, it declared unilateral ceasefire despite continuous artillery, artillery attacks and civilian casualties. However, what has happened was that, on the one hand, the whole attacks intensified, but at 24 a.m. last night, Russian APCs started to cross into Georgian territory. And there we had to act. There we had to fire back the artillery. There we had to take measures, because it was a clear-cut case of intervention. And, you know, this, these troops were there for many months. I mean, they didn't come for yesterday. We were not ready. They were ready. You know, I had barely enough time to mobilize a couple of brigades of Georgian armed forces. One brigade of Georgian armed forces is in Iraq, and we are calling it back tomorrow. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we, and we mobilized reserves. On, on that note, sir, uh, let me interrupt and ask you a question. You have stepped in, your troops have stepped in, in support of the U.S. efforts in Iraq. President Bush is probably listening to this conversation now, or those close to him are listening to this conversation now. What would you ask U.S. President George Bush to do right now for your people? Well, I think, uh, look, we are in the same situation as Finland was in 1939 when Stalin's brutal dictatorship attacked it, and uh, because it wanted peace of Finnish territory. We are in the same situation where Afghanistan was in 1979. It took the courage of Ronald Reagan to reverse the Soviet adventures in Afghanistan. Looks like the adventures are back. And looks like the peace is endangered again, and human rights and freedom is in grave danger again. Well, President Bush always said, Georgia is a beacon of liberty, success case of his own freedom agenda. Well, we didn't do it for him. We did it for our people. We believe in democracy, we believe in freedom. But we also, we, I always taught, you know, I went to universities in America, and they taught me that America always stands up for its freedoms. America always uh, helps freedom-loving countries. That is the moment of truth for everybody. For, I think, for President Bush, for the United States, for the rest of Western world, and for all of us. If we are willing to stand up for our own ideals, if we are willing to fight for freedom, if we are willing to protect people who deserve to be protected and give chance to everybody, notwithstanding of their ethnic origin, of their you know, uh, political beliefs, but people who believe in democracy and freedom. And that's, that's really the crucial moment of history, I think, for Europe, and uh, high time to wake up for everybody.